Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial, my name is Timster. Today I'm going to be going over part 7 of the Project AI tutorial series. So in the last part we set up a state here with a script to sort of regulate our animations and we also made a muzzle flare for our enemy. So if you haven't already, be sure to check out the previous parts, you'll be up to date. But apart from that, I'll get straight on into this tutorial. So if I press P, just how it is at the moment, and move my player forwards, our enemy will run to the nearest cover. If uh, he can see us though, He'll move to the next one, and as he does move, any cover points he hits, you'll notice he plays a ducking animation. So as you can see here, as soon as he hits one, he'll play the ducking animation, regardless whether it's the right one. So what we want to do is make sure that the ducking animation only plays when he's hit the correct cover point. So let's go over here to our set position script, and over here select this, control X to cut, and put it in there. So now this will only activate once uh, this criteria has been met. Okay, so that was the first part done. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add some hitting animations. So first of all, let's select our headshot sensor here and give it a property. So this here is going to be called hit. Oops, hit. And that will be a boolean. We'll do the same for our body shot sensor hits as a boolean. So now what we're going to do is go down to our cube here and on this we'll add a python controller. Now this here will be a script for the damage inflicted on these two. So let's go ahead and add ourselves a new script here. Call it damage.py. Then let's go to a previous script and copy and paste the first couple lines. Paste it in there. Select this up here control C and rename the scene so get current scene as well alright so the first item here is the headshot sensor which is equal to uh, scene.objects so scene.objects square bracket quotation mark and in here we want the name which is headshot sensor so select this control C to copy paste it in alright next one copy and paste this and put in here body instead uh, I guess or chest there we go and select this go ahead and copy it and paste in the name like so then I'm going to type in if head and then from that we want the property hit so if that is equal to true and own health is greater than zero so as you can see here we have a health property we don't want to be doing damage if he's already dead so at zero okay colon next line and in here we want to type in own health minus what is equal to a certain amount so up the top here let's go ahead and add in our amounts so for the head damage uh, let's just make it 50 oh, 50 and then body damage uh, damage can be say 20 alright so let's go ahead and delete that and then in here minus what is equal to head damage oh, damage and then let's make a new if statement so basically select this control C paste it in and instead of head we want a chest and then we also want to inflict body damage instead Alright, now also what we want to do is we want to play a sort of impact animation once our enemy has been hit. So to do that, let's go over to our Python sort of controller here, add in damage, and we also want to go ahead and join in our hit animation. So this one over here, you can see it's called hit, and it should be roughly 10 frames long. Alright, cool, so let's go ahead and import it in. So hit is equal to cunt.actuators, hit. All right, so import that in. And then down here, what we want to do is cunt.activate, hit. All right, and down here as well, cunt.activate, hit. Oh. Now also what we want to do is currently we have a sort of cycle where our character will duck behind cover, reload, wait for a while, jump up, do some shooting, and then keep doing that same cycle. 
Now if he gets hit during that time, what we want him to do is we want him to duck down as fast as possible and then sort of resume doing his normal cycle. So to do that, what we're going to do is actually go over to our enemy shoot script here and we're going to go down, all the way down to the bottom here and actually this line over here, press enter and I'm going to type in else if timer is equal to 6 this time, colon and next line. And so to activate this, what we want to do is see if the health has been changed. So on our enemy AI, let's go ahead and add a property to see if the property health has been changed. And if that's true, then that should trigger this. Let's go ahead and call this health change. Then up the top here, uh, we can check, well first of all import it in, so these are all actuators, actuator sensors, okay up here let's go ahead and put in health change and then health change is equal to cnt.sensors health change. Alright, and so now what we want to do is go ahead and activate it at a certain time. So if health change dot positive colon next line own timer is equal to six so regardless of whatever else is playing we want to set that timer to six now also what we want to do is go ahead and deactivate all of this so just select these ones here all the animations control c to copy move it all the way up and just place it underneath there so all animations stop playing regardless of what they're at. Now that should be fine, press enter and then what we'll do is scroll down and go all the way down to number 6 here. Now in the last script if we go over to damage you'll notice we activated the hit animation so that should last roughly 10 frames and we also want to check if that has finished playing yet. So if it has, um, let's go ahead and add an actuator, inverted and we want to check, oh, wrong one. We need to select the text rig and add it there. So actuator, and we want the hit animation. So this one right here, and invert. So scroll that, and we want to join that in over here to our enemy shoot. So if that evaluates to true, we'll go back over here scroll down and also let's go ahead and import it in so actuator sensors up the top here oh we have to name it something uh, let's call it hit actuator uh, control c to copy and put it up here cmt.sensors so let's go ahead over to our timer is equal to 6 here and add and hit actuator dot positive, oops, dot positive. So what we want to do down here is activate our ducking animation as well. So cmt dot activate duck, press enter, go to the next line, and in here, own timer uh, is equal to zero. So now that will go all the way back here and sort of reevaluate this. Now what we're going to do is go over to our enemy AI and always on a true pulse and go ahead and add that into our damage script so it's always checking. So now what we want to do is also go over to our death state here. So what we want to do is play a certain animation depending on the last shot that was fired. So let's go ahead over here and uh, do death animations dot py go over to our damage, copy and paste the first few there we go, uh, death animation, paste it in and what we want to do here, making sure you're on the death state is select death animation and in the back here we want to go ahead and join in headshot and then also we want a body death animation now, to check for whichever one we want, uh, we will need some sort of property or some way to store the last hit. So actually, very conveniently over here, our last cover here, we don't actually use at all. So I'm going to join in always and join it in like so. 
All right, and so in our script here, what we want to do is go ahead and check what last cover is. So if own last cover is equal to and then a string of uh, I don't know head for the headshot, then we'll do a colon next line, and in here we want to play the headshot animation. So actually, let's go ahead and import it in. Headshot is equal to cunt dot actuators headshots. Then let's go ahead and import in the body shot. So select this, Control C, uh, Enter, whoop, and body death is equal to cunt dot actuators. Um, paste it in. All right, and so now what we want to do is if that is equal to head, we want to activate the headshot animation and otherwise so else if own last cover is equal to body then cmt dot activate body death oh death alright so they should sort of determine which animation gets played so now let's go ahead and assign these variables here. So let's go over to our damage script underneath hits, or actually, let's do it above. Uh, own last, last cover is equal to, and then in here, head, and then down the bottom. Actually, let's just copy and paste. And in here, change it to body. Now our last cover here is actually still being used, so let's go ahead to our set position script here and sort of just get rid of this because we don't need it. Now one more thing we have to do is add damage for the player himself. So let's go ahead and make sure all the damage here is working and basically when the player gets a message, whatever message was sent. Now the message here we're going to have to go to our shoot script and uh, move up and it's just called hit. So let's just put hit in here, add an and, and let's give our player some health. So let's go ahead, add an integer, and then let's go ahead and minus health. So add health, let's make it minus 10. So also let's go ahead and set up our player health to be 100. Now what we're also going to do is, as you can see here, we have a muzzle flare in the way, so if our player sort of does shoot, then I think chances are it's going to hit this, and it won't actually, the ray won't actually get to the player. So basically we're going to make a ray object uh, just in front of all of this. So let's press Shift S, go to selected, Shift A, add a cube, scale it down, and just move it out front here. Now also what we're going to do, press numpad 7, Z to go into wireframe, and we want to set it up right in front of the sort of character, like so. So it's almost shooting right in the middle towards the player. Numpad 1, and just even it out roughly. Now, this here will also parent to our gun bone here. Uh, so, this one over here. So, if you go into pose mode, make sure that our gun bone is selected. Go back to object mode, select this, hold down. Shift, select the rig, press Ctrl P and turn to bone. And so now on our cube here, let's go ahead and add a ray negative y axis. So ray negative y. And on here, let's go ahead and make the range say 100. Oh, 100. And then sort of replace it for this one. So hold down Shift. Make sure that your enemy AI is set to state 3. Uh, rename this bullet and set it up the same. Now let's double check the direction here, so local and it's still the same, which is good, so hold down shift, change it back to global and then let's just replace it in here. Alright, so get rid of that, we won't need that anymore, rename it something else and delete it. Now this here we can go ahead and call something else, so maybe uh, bullet shoot. Now at the moment if we just press play you'll notice he'll sit behind the cover and then look at the player shoot but no health is going down and the reason for that is if we go over here uh, this here is describing an object and this here is describing a string 
So what we need to do is convert that to a string just with str and now that should send a message through. So this here was just for testing. We can get rid of that. Just own.send message and now that should work. So bottom left hand property and you'll notice it goes down as the enemy shoots. So there we go guys, that's the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a like, comment, or share down below. All of that stuff is greatly appreciated, but you don't have to do it. Next tutorial series, we should hopefully be finishing up. I think we might be getting into maneuvering around a bit more, so we have some special rotation stuff for that. But apart from that, I think we're pretty close to being finished. So yeah, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.